some of you joining us through the various Vatican media channels. Welcome to all of you through the Vatican Audio Live Events app, the Vatican Radio app, our Vatican News web portal, English YouTube channel, or Facebook Live feed. I'd like to thank our media partners for allowing those of you joining us through television, through Salt and Light, Catholic TV, Catholic Faith Network, EWTN, at Madarshan TV, and we also have radio listeners out there, some of you tuning in through Luminous Radio and through other diocesan radio stations. Our shortwave radio broadcast picking up this transmission. I'm Sister Bernadette, and with me today in the studio is Maria Martin from Dublin, Ireland. And together we'll be providing the English texts and translations. L'angelo del Signore portò l'annuncio a Maria. And we begin morning prayer this morning with the Angelus. Ecco la serva del Signore. Mi accada secondo la tua parola. E il verbo si è fatto carne. Ed abita in mezzo a noi. Prega per noi, Santa Madre di Dio. Perché diventiamo degni delle promesse di Cristo. Preghiamo. Infondi, Signore, la Tua grazia nei nostri cuori, affinché noi, che abbiamo conosciuto per l'annuncio dell'Angelo, l'incarnazione del Figlio Tuo, Gesù Cristo, attraverso la Sua passione e morte, siamo condotti alla gloria della Sua risurrezione. Per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. Gloria al Padre, al Figlio e allo Spirito Santo. Come era nel principio, ora e sempre, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. Iniziamo questa giornata con la recita delle lodi. We begin uh, today per esprimere with the la nostra gratitudine e la nostra domanda. Rinnoviamo la nostra gratitudine a Dio per l'appartenenza alla Chiesa. For our belonging to Perché the church, come reciteremo fra poco, so that as we will Dio recite, it before long that um, God might inhabit His church, this house, and that this house, which always offers us the presence of Christ, the life of our life. Nel centenario della nascita in the di centenary of the birth of Father Giussani, we thank casa, Him for the, the great gift of this house that through a 
that we have all received. We ask the grace for simple hearts, open hearts, so that we might welcome all that the Spirit wants to give us and what he asks of the entire movement in this meeting with the Holy Father. And now he's giving indications for how in due morning cuore. prayer will follow. Il primo dall'obelisco alla mia sinistra e il secondo dall'obelisco alla mia destra. L'unica pausa che facciamo è quella segnata dall'asterisco. O oh Dio vieni a salvarmi. Signore vieni prestarmi aiuto. Gloria al Padre, al Figlio, allo Spirito Santo. Come era nel principio, ora e sempre, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. tempo ormai di svegliarvi dal sonno la salvezza è più vicina di quando credemmo alzo gli occhi verso i monti da dove mi verrà l'aiuto il mio aiuto viene Our first psalm this morning psalm 120 ha fatto cielo e terra non lascerà vacillare il tuo piede. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where shall come my help? Custodio. My help non shall come from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Sonno. May he never allow you to stumble. Let him sleep not your God. Il tuo no, he sleeps il not in slumbers, Israel's God. The Lord is your God, e with his shadow he covers you. At your right hand he stands. By day the sun shall Nella not smite you, notte, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from evil. He will e guard your soul. The Lord will guard your coming and going, both now and forever. È tempo ormai di svegliarvi dal sonno. La salvezza è più vicina di quando time now for you to wake from sleep. Cambierò For salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness. The canticle this morning from the book of the prophet Isaiah. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, if she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have graven you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your builders outstrip your destroyers. And those who laid you waste go forth from you. Lift up your eyes round about and see. 
They all gather. They come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall put them all on as an ornament. You shall bind them on as a bride does. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and raise my signal to the peoples. And they shall bring your sons in their bosom and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Gloria al Padre al Figlio e allo Spirito Santo come era nel principio ora e sempre nei secoli dei secoli Amen cambierò il loro lutto in gioia li consolerò e li renderò felici mi proteggo nella corsa per afferrarlo io che sono già stato a terra Psalm 67 let God arise, let his foes be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is blown away, so will they be blown away. Like wax that melts before the fire, so the wicked shall perish at the presence of God. But the just shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult and dance for joy. O sing to the Lord, make music to his name. Make a highway for him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice in the Lord, exult at his presence. Father of the orphan, defender of the widow, such is God in his holy place. God gives the lonely, lonely a home to live in. He leads the prisoners forth into freedom, but rebels must dwell in a parched land. When you went forth, O God, at the head of your people, when you marched across the desert, the earth trembled, the heavens melted at the presence of God at the presence of God, Israel's God. You poured down, O oh God, a generous rain. When your people were starved, you gave them new life. It was there that your people found a home, prepared in your goodness, O oh God, for the poor. Gloria al Padre e al Figlio e allo Spirito Santo come era nel principio, ora e sempre nei secoli dei secoli amen mi protendo nella corsa per afferrarlo io che sono già stato afferrato dal Cristo ringrazio il mio Dio ogni volta che mi ricordo di voi pregando sempre con gioia in ogni mia preghiera making my prayer with joy thankful for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now and I am sure that he who began this good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. You shall be my witnesses to the end of the earth. I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. I am with you always, to the end of time. Glory al Padre, al Figlio e allo Spirito Santo. Siate miei testimoni fino agli estremi confini della terra. Udi la voce del Signore chi manderò. E io risposi, eccomi, mandame. Benedetto il Signore, Dio di Israele. Morning prayer canticle, the Benedictus from the Gospel of Luke. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has visited his people and redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior in the house of David, his servant. As he promised by the lips of holy men, those who were his prophets from of old, a Savior who would free us from our foes, from the hands of all who hate us, so his love for our fathers is fulfilled, and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that we from fear, saved from the hands of our foes, 
Be my servant in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. As for you, little child, you shall be called the prophet of God, the Most High. You shall go ahead of the Lord to prepare his ways before him, to make known to his people their salvation through the forgiveness of all their sins, the loving kindness of the heart of our God, who visits us like a dawn from the high. He will give light to those in darkness, those who dwell in the shadow of death, and guide us into the way of peace. Glory al Padre, al Figlio, e allo Spirito Santo, come era in principio, ora e sempre, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. Udi la voce del Signore, chi manderò? E Dio risposi, eccomi, manda me. A ciascuno il suo lavoro, vegliate e pregate. Stay awake and pray. We await in the heavens and a new earth, where justice shall flourish. As the Father sent you, so you send us. By your grace we are as you made us. May your grace in us not be in vain. Even today you face life and death before us. Do not abandon us. We bear your name and will build your kingdom. We have worked all night without catching anything. We will leave our homeland and cast out our nets. You were the same yesterday and today and forever. Keep us forth for some simple-hearted, shining like stars in the world, holding your word up high. Christ in us, you are our hope of glory. Bring the seed planted in us to maturity, overcome our resistance, free us from the hopes that delude us. Attendendo la salvezza con timore e tremore secondo i suoi disegni benevoli, Padre nostro che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome. And we pray the Our Father together. Sia fatta la tua volontà come in cielo così in terra. Dacci oggi il nostro pane quotidiano. Rimetti a noi i nostri debiti come anche noi li rimettiamo ai nostri debitori e non abbandonarci alla tentazione ma liberaci dal male. Padre che unisci in un solo volere chi in te spera concedi al tuo popolo di amare ciò che comandi e desiderare ciò che prometti. Father, you Perché tra le vicende del mondo la siano fissi i nostri cuori dove la vera gioia per Cristo nostro so Signore, world, Signore ci benedica, be ci preservi da ogni male, ci conduca alla vita eterna. Amen. Veni, Sante Spiritus. Veni, per Maria. And now there will be a succession of hymns and, and readings, etc., that accompany the members of Communion and Liberation who are present today to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the birth of their founder. We, we will also hear music provided by the choir. Can you tell us a little bit about the choirs here? Um, the choirs are uh, the university choir, the adult choir, and the secondary school students, the GS choir from Milan. Um, and they're singing now um, a song from the very beginning of the movement, Povera Voce, written by Adriana Mascagni and Maretta Campi. <laughs> Perché la vita c'è, tutta la vita chiede l'eternità, non può morire, non può finire, la nostra voce che la vita chiede all'amore, non è poi. 
Come scrive Camus nei suoi taccuini, non è attraverso degli scrupoli che l'uomo diventerà grande. La grandezza viene per grazia di Dio, come un bel giorno. Per me tutto avvenne come la sorpresa di un bel giorno. Quando un insegnante di prima liceo, avevo 15 anni, I was then 15 years old, read and explained to us the prologue of the Gospel of St. John. At that time in the seminary, it was obligatory to read that prologue at the end of every Mass. I had therefore heard it thousands of times. But the beautiful day came. Everything is grace. Quote, the Word of God, or rather that of which everything was made, was made flesh, quote, he said. Perciò la bellezza si è fatta Quote, carne. And therefore beauty was made flesh. La bontà si è fatta carne. Flesh. La giustizia si è fatta flesh. carne. L'amore, la vita, la verità si è fatta were carne. Made flesh. Non Being does not exist in a platonic nowhere. Si è fatto it became carne. flesh. È uno it is one noi. among us. Mi ricordai in quel momento di una poesia di Leopardi, Leopardi a poem I had studied during that month of escape in my third year of high school, entitled To His Lady. It was a hymn not to one of Leopardi's many loves, but to the discovery that he had unexpectedly made at that summit of his life, from which he would later decline. That what he had been seeking in the lady he loved was something beyond her, that was made visible in her, that communicated itself through her, but was beyond her. This beautiful hymn to woman ends with this passionate invocation. Quote, if you, my love, are one of those undying forms, the eternal mind, will not transform to mortal flesh to try funereal sorrows of ephemeral beings. Or if you dwell in one of those innumerable worlds far off, in the celestial swirl, lit by a sun more stunning than our own. And if you breathe a kinder air than ours, then from this meager earth, where years are brief and dark, this hymn your unknown lover sings, accept." Unquote. And in that instant, I thought how Leopardi's words seemed to be begging, 1,800 years later, for something that had already happened, announced by St. John the Baptist. The word was made flesh. Not only had being, beauty, truth, not disdained to clothe its perfection in flesh and to bear the toils of this human life, but it had come to die for man. Quote, he came to his own and his own received him not. Unquote. He knocked on the door of his own home and was not recognized. That is the whole story. My life as a very young man was literally invaded by this, both as a memory that continually influenced my thought and as a stimulus to make me reevaluate the banality of everyday life. The present moment from then on was no longer banal for me. Everything that existed and therefore everything that was beautiful, true, attractive, fascinating, even as a possibility, found in that message its reason for being as the certainty of a presence and a motivating hope which caused one to embrace everything. Because when such a beautiful day happens, 
and one unexpectedly sees something of extraordinary beauty, one cannot help but speak about it to one's friends. One cannot help but cry out, look there. And that's what happened. Words written by Luigi Giussani reflecting on Camus and Leopardi. And we now have the performance of Niti da Stella of Anonymous Origins from the 18th century. Al sesto mese, l'angelo Gabriele fu mandato da Dio in una città della Galilea, chiamata Nazareth, a una vergine, promessa sposa di un uomo della casa di Davide, di nome Giuseppe. La vergine si chiamava Maria, e entrando of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Allora But Maria Mary disse said to the angel, Come how can this questo, be, since non I have no relations with a man? Le rispose and the angel Lo said Spirito to her in Santo reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. 
for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the an angel departed from her. This nothingness each of us is, ca is can be taken by God and made into great things. So it was with Our Lady. And the Almighty united Himself with her in the most inconceivable way to us and in the way and in a greater way than we can certainly imagine, indeed more than that could not be done. It is as if he had exhausted his infinity, God, by becoming the son of that girl. And the word became flesh. As each one of us became flesh in the womb of his or her mother, that's the kind of things you must look at so that you become able to perceive and feel them, let alone to speak of them. That's the kind of thing you must sit back and watch. Watch as, uh, as you watch the great, greatest and most beautiful things, but without comparison even with those things. So the religious feeling of the Virgin came to be invested with the power of God. Because to God, nothing is impossible. And so the Son of the Most High made himself his son. Therefore, the mystery, in the Christian sense, is the event that makes us understand, on the one hand, what God is, God in so far as he makes himself communicable and experienceable, joining in, in some way, from the voice that came out of the burning bush up to, to the voice that spoke through all the prophets. To this peak, to this truly ineffable peak, that we, that we cannot say, except to embrace its fruit. God made himself the son of that, of that young woman. How did she express herself? The Gospel says, fiat, fiat, like a breath, just as, as it was nothing, as that small 15-year-old girl was nothing, so this great act without which the whole world would be the whole history of the world would be changed or rather would not have been changed this act had a crucial value for the whole world be it a breath it is the breath of freedom and freedom is the capacity to adhere to being, to mystery, to being that reveals itself through the mystery, to the mystery that invades our lives. Fiat, yes, yes. What, what strikes me most when I read the Holy Gospel in the account of the Annunciation is when the angel finishes speaking and Our Lady says, 
Yes, may it be done to me according to your word. Full stop. Then the angel departed from her. And so I like to stop at this phrase. Then the angel departed from her. And I tried to put myself in her place to imagine how this girl must have felt psychologically without any support without any apparent motivation other than loyalty to what to that memory she could have said it was an illusion she could have said it was just my imagination and the angel left her just think she was left to face her fiance to face her parents, to face and what was throbbing in her as life was not yet tangible, not yet provable, not yet possible to experience. I think I can grasp in this phrase the true, the true moment of faith, the culminating moment of faith made, built, made truly of devotion, of reason, of the truth of reason, loyalty to her own history, loyalty to what had just happened, and fidelity to the greatness of God of which in some way a hint had given evidence. And we've been hearing the actual voice of Luigi Giussani, a reflection given on May 2nd, 1988. And now the performance of a hymn called Jesus, Noi non sappiamo chi era. We don't know who you were. sulla riva del mare Paolo lo incontrò sulla via di Damasco vieni fratello ci sarà un posto posto anche per te noi non sappiamo chi era noi non sappiamo chi fu To illustrate this song a little bit, there will be a gospel reading from the gospel according to Matthew. In coming to the other side of the sea, the disciples had forgotten to bring bread. Jesus said to them, Look out and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They discussed among themselves, saying, it is because we have brought no bread. When Jesus became aware of this, he said, 
You of low, little faith, why do you discuss among yourselves that is because you have no bread? Do you not yet understand, and do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many wicker baskets you took up, or the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How do you not comprehend that I was not speaking to you about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to be aware to beware of the leaven of bread but of the teaching of the pharisees and sadducees when jesus went into the region of caesarea philippi he asked his disciples who do people say that the son of man is they replied some say john the baptist Others, Elijah, still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. And another reflection directly from Luigi Giussani. As they went towards the sea, the path skirted a steep rock on which the Romans had built a citadel, impregnable, Caesarea Philippi. Then Christ must have stopped to look as we do when we go to the Riviera. We stop to look at the steep rocks of Caponoli or, or a Finale, and suddenly because he was a man and ideas came to him, as they come to us, suddenly the idea of his future creature flashed to him and he said, Who do people say that I am? Well, some say that you are a, a conjurer, that you are a deceiver, you are the son of Beelzebub, the chief of the demons. Others say that you are that you are the prophet Elijah, reborn, John the Baptist, reborn. Others say that you are a great prophet. But who do you say that I am? Peter, Simon Peter, answered abruptly to repeat that he had heard said on the first day, you are Christ the Son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon, for you did not think this, but the Father told you. Now, you are like this stone, this rock, and as on this rock stands the impregnable city, the pregnable citadel on you, I will build my church, and no one will ever come to demolish it. Thus he, Christ, had the intuition of his future construction. The day before he had fed 5,000 men in the desert and therefore they were exalted, already inflamed by his word and by his miracles, touched in the concrete need. People couldn't see any more and they wanted to make him king, says the Gospel. But he turns away 
and across the, the sea, across the lake. The next day, he is in the synagogue in Capar Capernaum, saying, speaking. As usual, the attendant takes the scroll, shakes it out, whoever wants to can come out. Christ also took those moments to explain the Bible according to its truth. He reads, it is the passage of the manna in the desert. He closes up the scroll and says, your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. But whoever feeds on my word, this is the true manna. Whoever feeds on my word will, will never die. At that moment, from the back of the synagogue, people who had been looking for him since the previous day entered, entered the hall and Christ was moved and suddenly changed, having the greatest intuition of his after that of the church. Suddenly he changed the meaning of the words, using the same words, and said, You seek me because I have fed you, but I will give you my flesh to eat, I will give you my blood to drink, as in an extreme emphasis of tenderness and pity. That was just what the intellectuals who were present were waiting for. They said, but he's crazy. Do you hear what he's saying? He's mad. Why are you listening to him? He is mad. Duris est hic sermo. You can hardly understand what he says. Come away. Let's go away. Let's go away. So slowly the crowd, grumbling, walks away until Christ remains with the usual small group of his most affectionate followers in silence and Christ doesn't doesn't take anything away from what he has said and says do you also want to leave it is Simon again who blurts out in his in his expression of attachment Lord we too do not understand what you are saying but if we go away from you to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life. If I do not believe this man, life has no meaning. You cannot believe anything. You cannot believe your own eyes, anything. Those words from February 25th, 1987. After reflecting on Mary and then Jesus, we now turn to St. Peter and his response to the Lord in a song called Razon de Vivir, Reason to Live.
caminar lo bello y la luz sin perder distancia para estar con vos sin perder el ángel de la nostalgia para descubrir que la vida va sin pedirnos nada y considerar que todo es hermoso y no cuesta nada para combinar, para estar con vos para descubrir y considerar solo me hace falta que estés aquí con tus ojos Once again, a gospel reading following this song, helping us to understand Peter's following of the Lord from the gospel according to St. John. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. And once again, words of reflection on this touching gospel passage from Luigi Giussani. I almost feel ashamed to comment on this page, but nonetheless, I encourage you to put the goodwill of your heart into what is ineffable and cannot be said of the mystery of God who touches the human person and of the human person who is touched by the mystery of God. Not considering the fact that he first asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And it is almost understandable that he would have answered, certainly, Lord, you know that I love you. But the second and third time especially, he only asks him, Simon, do you love me? Not more, not less. Let's try to identify with that blunt and rough man in front of the Lord. It, in front of the Lord, his soul was full of the memory of his betrayal. His betrayal was simply the epiphany let's say, the epiphenomenon, the manifestation, the manifestation of a moment, of something he had within him, a coarseness, ingenerousness, an obduracy, fear, timidity, cowardice, pettiness, a pettiness. He was all of this. 
His soul was full of this. And in front of that question, everything came to the surface. The betrayal was like a point of revelation. All of his miserableness came to the surface. The church has a say to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us call to mind our sins in the Mass. How many of us repeat it when the church asks us to say it? Simon felt all his smallness, pusillanimity and pettiness of man. Simon, do you love me more than the others love me? When he said, Certainly, Lord, I love you. When he said, Lord, you know everything, notwithstanding the appearances, notwithstanding all the appearances of me to myself, you know that I love you. I want you, because I love you means I want you. That is, I affirm you. I recognize what you are for me and for everything. This is the overturning of, of the moralism and justice made with our own hands. That, that man was a poor sinner like us, one who had just betrayed him so indecently, as, as perhaps we've never done to our own, according to our own memory. He was full of mistakes, yet he loved him. He could have made a hundred thousand more mistakes, yet he loved him. And he could tell, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. So then the Lord told him, I entrust my testimony in the world to you. He entrusted his testimony, little sheep, lambs. He entrusted his kingdom in the world to that miserable sinner. And this time we've also seen images of Luigi Giussani during spiritual exercises. He preached to the Fraternity of Communion and Liberation in 1989. We now see performed the hymn La Strada, The Way.
and once more the recitation of the Angelus as this period of morning prayer and reflection concludes. Le cose che vedo mi fanno ridere come un bambino. Le cose che vedo mi fanno piangere come un uomo. We're going to have a hymn in English now. They're reading the translation into Italian. The things that I see have me laughing like a baby. Proprio l'altro giorno ho sentito una voce nel buio. Mi ha mandato via con del fango sul viso. Page 31. Now a series of uh, so hymns will be uh, performed before the arrival of the Holy Father, which is expected at 11.30 Rome time. And there'll be indications of page numbers from a booklet that participants in the square have. Schiacciano e condannano chi non vale niente, davanti a queste cose c'è chi maledice, ma il figlio del potente Cristo cosa chiede? Che siano una sola cosa perché il mondo... The hymn we're hearing now in Italian is a prayer that all might be one. Il 
As we move on with uh, the hymns, uh, Maria, what what does this day mean for you from communion and liberation? Um, well, this is a very beautiful day for us because it means that we're coming once again united to the Holy Father to ask his blessing and his guidance for our movement. Um, uh, from all over the world as before we've come in 2015 to see the Holy Father today we come again to ask that he would c continue to guide us as he guides the whole church and now being performed as a spiritual Peter do you love me We see now images from the back of St. Peter's Square as people continue waiting for the presence of our Holy Father. Non so proprio come far per ringraziare il mio Signor dato i cieli a song now being performed called I Cieli, the Heavens, a song of gratitude to the Lord. Could, uh, tell us what the the principal inspiration of Luigi Giussani is for the church. What would you say? Um, well, in short, I suppose that the principal inspiration is that uh, we are all awaiting the meaning of our lives, and that that is found in Jesus Christ and in the encounter with Him in the church, in in others, um, in His Word. Um, and that it has meaning for our lives today, that it is the way that we can um, direct our lives um, and that we are not alone. That is the message for, from, that we want to give witness to in front of the men and women of today because so often they're lost in, in looking for meaning in their lives, so that he is with us. 
Many, many people here gathered in the square. We can see them now looking down toward Via Conciliazione. This is uh, Communion and Liberation is a movement uh, founded by Luigi Giussani in Northern Italy and spread throughout the world. Uh, how people participating in the movement, how do they reflect their participation in their daily lives? Um, well, by prayer, like everybody else in the church, by prayer and by reflecting on texts uh, such as the ones we've heard today from the founder um, and uh, seeking meaning in the events that the Lord puts in front of us because the concrete events of life are how the Lord speaks to us, um, always guided by the light of the church. So now we have a song from Brazil, So Feliz Senor in Portuguese. I am happy because you are my friend, our Lord. Ho un amico grande, grande, di più giusti non c'è. So we are continuing with more songs from our history because the place of music in the movement is very important to keep our hearts awake. Um, it has been there since the very beginning. Here we see the Holy Father greeting some of the children. Right on the Pope Mobile. And the person that all these thousands of people have been waiting for has arrived. He's making his way now through the crowds on the Pope Mobile. Voglio fare da me, a crolla 
Luigi Giussani, uh, born in 1922, we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of his birth today. Thousands of people from around the world gathered here in St. Peter's with Pope Francis. He died in 2005. Uh, when he died, um, Pope John Paul II sent uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, as he then was, to celebrate his funeral in Milan. We're singing a hymn, a song from the movement, which says, "If when one has a, a good heart, one only wants to love. He is one is no longer afraid of anything when one has a good heart." I think what's very beautiful in the square today is you can see very young children and much older people who've all made this pilgrimage to Rome from all over the world, from the 70 or 80 countries where the movement is present, the movement of communion liberation. Some of you may be familiar with the very large way of the cross that communion and liberation organizes uh, during holy week in the, the very large cities um, one very large one taking place in new york city which is a very moving experience to be in the midst of the people making the way of the cross as people go about their daily lives very similar to what would have taken place in jerusalem when jesus himself was was moving toward Calvary, in which the very event that would completely change the world was taking place as people just go about their daily lives.
Okay, we sing the small children still in the Pope Mobile with the Holy Father as he heads down the Via della Conciliazione, which uh, many of the crowds have spread down into this street because there isn't enough space to hold everybody in St. Peter's Square. Fifty thousand people were expected this morning. It looks like many more have turned up. There is a very festive air in the square right now. And we thank God for beautiful weather this morning. The children riding in this Pope Mobile having the the opportunity of a lifetime right now. They're now making his way back into St. Peter's Square after having gone out onto Via Conciliazione to greet the overflow there. During his lifetime, Luigi Giussani also left various writings, some of which have been translated into English and are available, maybe not in print, but are still available. He's also left his mark on the church in Italy. Every year, uh, there is a meeting in Rimini, which is highly, highly attended by politicians and religious leaders alike in order to talk together, dialogue together about uh, what's happening in society.
Once again, we hear a hymn in Portuguese being performed by members from Brazil, a hymn to charity, to love. We see here the Holy Father now very near the, the steps leading up to the, the part just in front of the Basilica, the Sagrada. Performing Exultate Justi. Choir performing Exultate Justi, written by Ludovico Grossi da Viadana, 16th century Italian composer. Father now alone. The children have gotten out of the Pope Mobile now making his way up to the stage. Everyone awaiting to hear the words prepared for this occasion. For those of you who may have joined us after we began, the Holy Father will soon be addressing members of the Communion and Liberation Movement who have gathered from all over the world here in Rome to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the birth of their founder, Servant of God, Luigi Giussani, whose birthday was exactly 100 years ago today. We've been participating in a program of morning prayer and now various hymns, which are familiar to members of the movement as we now await our Holy Father as he descends from the Pope Mobile and will soon be on the stage. Nos 
son enemigo indio con español a través de su gracia and in greeting the holy father him being sung in spanish a la virgen de guadalupe to our lady of guadalupe Nos explica cómo pudo pasar la reina de los cielos lo vino a visitar está llorando el indio el rosal floreció Dios le ha dado una madre de su mismo color la virgen de Guadalupe estrella de la mañana ojos negros piel morena americana, protectora de los pobres, el sol de toda la raza, transformaste a nuestra tierra en continente de esperanza. And now, uh, in greeting the Holy Father, we'll be hearing from Davide Prosperi, the president of the Fraternity Communion and Liberation, shortly. Santo Padre. Holy Father, we are infinitely grateful for, to you for agreeing to receive our people here in this beautiful square that brings us back in our minds to so many encounters with the popes, from St. Paul VI to St. John Paul II to Benedict XVI and to you. Pope Francis. In the audience you granted to us on the 7th of March 2015, after thanking Father Cesani for the good you had received through meditating on his writings, you recommended to us not to be worshippers of his ashes, but to keep his fire alive. Father Cesani truly lit a fire in the lives of thousands of men and women. He transmitted the fire that is the Holy Spirit, the fire of knowledge of Christ and of the human person. This fire is alive, even after 17 years after his death. As the two experiences that we have chosen from many others will recount to us at the end of this greeting. You, Holy Father, have not limited yourself to a recommendation, but have helped us in recent years, especially through the dicastery for the laity, the family and life, whom we thank for their patient and paternal guidance, accompaniment, to imagine and embark on a new missionary impetus, a new page in the life of our history. As president of the fraternity, I would like to assure you, Holy Father, that together with the other leaders and the entire movement, we are following with great attention the indications of the Holy See, so that the charism that the Holy Spirit gave to Father Giussani for the good of the whole Church may produce ever new fruits. And today, full of gratitude and joy for your invitation, we are here to ask you how we can contribute even more to the renewal that the Church is working under your paternal guidance. 
We are in the centenary year of Father Cesani's birth. This occasion has given rise to many initiatives, promoted with the intention of broadening our attitude to those peripheries, our attention to those peripheries of the world and of the soul to which you have directed us. It is true, there is much desolation, so many dramas in the hearts of men and women, and at the same time, an infinite awaiting or longing for Christ conscious or not, that reveals the profound reason why the Lord wanted to give the whole Church in Father Giussani a witness to Christ's thirst for man and man's thirst for Christ. Precisely in this square, on the occasion of the First World Meeting of the Ecclesial Movements on Pentecost 1998, Father Giussani concluded his speech before St. John Paul II as follows. The true protagonist of history is the beggar, Christ, begging for the heart of man, and the heart of man begging for Christ. The two testimonies that now follow are meant to be a sign of the vitality of what Father Giussani generated with his total yes to Christ. Thank you, Holy Father, once again for your paternity, your welcoming of us, for the words you will address to us, and for your blessing. And as we heard, we will be hearing two testimonies from members of the movement, one from Hasina Hawari, and another from Rose Businge. Holiness, I am here because I am a daughter, and therefore I cannot address you except as a father who guides me. Fatherhood and faith is what won me to Christ, and therefore to the Church. I too come from Africa. I met the great ecclesial family through the ga gaze of Father Giussani, who educated me to discover myself through the recognition of a mysterious presence, a presence that with time has taken on more and more the unmistakable features of the face of Christ within the company of communion and liberation. The content of myself is Christ. I am you who make me now. Previously, I loved a Jesus who had nothing to do with me, who had nothing to do with my nothingness. But upon meeting Father Giussani, I discovered that I was worthy of Christ's loving embrace. I am nothing but love to the core. I'm a nurse, and I work with women suffering from AIDS in the slums of Kampala, where poverty is enormous. I've always wished that they too, in their own circumstances, could discover that they are loved and wanted by Christ. I thus rediscover myself communicating the eternal love of Christ, even by giving a simple injection to a patient. So in all these years, my brothers and sisters, poor people, sick, miserable in the eyes of most people, have discovered that by belonging to Christ, everything belonged to them, their own children, their husbands. The breaking of stones from morning to night, which is their work, the schools they desired and built for their own children. Some of our mothers want no one to feel alone or abandoned. That, that's why in 2005, when they heard of so many people 
who were suffering from the catastrophe caused in the United States by Hurricane Katrina. They wanted to donate the entire fruit of their week's stone-breaking work to help American families. These very poor Ugandan sisters of ours wanted to help support America. Charity does not measure. For the same reason, when they heard about the war in Ukraine, they immediately started to give what little they had. The money they collected, they described as a few poor tears offered to the heart of God so that he could convert their hearts and the hearts of those making war. They looked to the Pope, their father, with whom they feel free to weep in the face of this evil. As Father Giussani once told me, with the very form of your vocation as a Memories Domini, you cry out in the crowd to everyone that Christ is the meaning of everything, that it is Christ who saves. I'm not ashamed to speak to you like this, because throughout your pontificate you have always spoken and speak now of Christ in a way that coincides with my life, and that is why I feel like a chi child of yours. Rose. Beautiful testimony given by a woman from Uganda, a member of Communion and Liberation, heart felt and very touching words expressing her own belonging to the fraternity and how her group helps others in the world. Now we hear from Hasina Huari. The first time, Holy Father, I went to Porto Franco, a, a, to a free study aid center for students, which was begun in Milan and which is now spread to 40, century, 40 centers throughout Italy. I was 15 years old and I needed some help in English. The first thing that struck me was the fact of doing the interview all on my own, telling strangers who I was. It had put me at peace in that moment to see the photograph of John Paul II hanging there in the room kissing an elderly man. I also said to myself, how good these people are to have a picture of the Pope kissing an old man on the head. This image had relaxed me because I was fond of the Pope who had been in Morocco, my mother's country of origin, and was a person who represented peace to me. After the interview, I started going to Porto Franco. Before long, I was spending every afternoon there. I had found friends with whom I could talk about everything and who had the same questions about life as I did. Then one day they invited me to a holiday in the mountains. That holiday was the first time in my life that I realized I had not been abandoned, despite the fact that my father had left us when I was seven. After a hike in the mountains, Don Giorgio Pontigia, who was leading the hospital, or sorry, was leading the holiday, asked us, how was the hike? And we all said, beautiful. And he asked, why was it beautiful? And no one could answer. At one point, Don Father Giorgio said, not even if you all joined together, you couldn't make a single pebble out of that mountain, not even a little flower growing out of the rock. The only one who can do it is God. When he said God like that, I thought, does he really exist then? At that moment, I felt my heart was bursting, and I said God with all my heart. It seemed logical to me that it was him, as if the one I was waiting for in my life existed. He seemed so fatherly and so present, not someone to be afraid of, someone who might judge my evil and my limitations, but one who made me, even for me, even a flower that sprang from the rock. I will never forget that day. It was June 2009. Since then, a journey to know God, that is, the Father, and to know myself has begun. At university, I enrolled in languages and international relations. I majored in English and Arabic. English, which was the very subject I had gone to Porto Franco for, 
for help and Arabic, which I did not speak, even though I was Arab. As a fr friend told me, it is really true that when you meet God, he makes you embrace your own history. My mother is also very grateful to this place, invited to a meeting, she said, of the study place in Port Porto Franco, for me it was a husband because it helped me to educate my daughter. As I grew up in the movement, I discovered that the little old man whom John Paul II kissed on the forehead was actually Father Gisani. His charisma has accompanied me and is accompanying me on the journey of life. A great gift, even though I have never met him in person, he has been an instrument of God in my life because he is allowing me to flourish. I thank you, Holy Father and for all you do for people like me. Two beautiful testimonies of people who have come to know God, have come to know his love through the charism, through the inspiration of, of Luigi Giussani, whose 100th anniversary of birth we celebrate today. Now we should be hearing from the Holy Father who greeted both of the women who provided the testimonies with a large smile. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning and welcome. You've come in great numbers from Italy and from various countries. Your movement does not lose its ability to gather and mobilize. I thank you for wanting to manifest your communion with the Apostolic See and your affection for the Pope. I thank the President of the Fraternity, Professor Davide Prosperi, as well as Asina and Rose, who shared their experiences. I greet the Cardinal Prefect Farrell and the other Cardinals and Bishops present. We are gathered to commemorate the centenary of the birth of, of uh, Monsignor Luigi Giussani. We did so with gratitude in our souls. I express my personal gratitude for the good he did to me as a priest as I meditated on some of Father Giussani's uh, books as a young priest. I do so also as the universal pastor for all that he was able to sow and radiate everywhere for the good of the church. And how could we not forget those who are his friends, his sons, his daughters, his disciples? How can we not remember him? Because thanks to his priestly fatherhood, his passionate communicating of Christ, you too have grown up in faith in this gift that gives meaning, human breadth, and hope to life. Father Giussani was a father and a teacher, a servant of all the human anxieties and situations he was encountering in his educational and missionary passion. The church recognizes his pedagogical and theological genius deployed or given through a charism that was given to him by the Holy Spirit for the common good. It's not mere nostal nostalgia that leads us to celebrate this centenary, but the grateful memory of his presence, not only in the biographies and in our hearts, but also in the communion of saints from where he intercedes for all who, who are his own. I know, dear friends, brothers and sisters, that, that um, periods of transition when the Founding Father is no longer physically present, these periods of transition are not easy. So many Catholic foundations throughout history have experienced this. We must thank Father Julian Caron for his service.
for his service in guiding the movement during this period and for keeping the rudder of communion with the pontificate, with the Holy See, with the Pope steady. However, there has been no shortage of serious problems, divisions, and certainly also an impoverishment in the presence of such an important ecclesial movement as communion and liberation, from which the Church and myself hopes for more, much more. Times of crisis are times of, of recapitulating your extraordinary history of charity, culture, and mission. They are times of critical discernment of what has limited the fruitful potential of Father Giussani's charism. These are times of renewal and missionary revitalization in light of the current ecclesial moment as well as the needs, sufferings, and hopes of contemporary humanity. Crisis provokes growth. It should not be reduced to conflict, which undoes things. It should make us grow. Surely, Father Giussani is praying for unity in all the many ways of the man your movement is manifested. You know very well that unity does not mean uniformity. Do not be afraid of different sensitivities and confrontation in the path of the movement. It can't be otherwise in a movement in which all adherents are called to live personally and to share co-responsibly the charism they have received. Everyone needs to live it in an original way, but also in community. This, yes, this is important, that unity be stronger than dispersive forces or the dragging on of old opposition. Unity with those who lead the movement. Unity with the pastors. Unity in carefully following the directions of the dicastery for the laity family and life and unity with the Pope who is the servant of communion in truth and charity. Do not waste your precious time in chatter, distrust, and opposition. Please don't waste time. And now, I would like to recall some aspects of Father Giussani's rich personality, his charism, his vocation as an educator, and his love for the church. Father Giussani, a, a charismatic man. He was certainly a man of great personal charisma, capable of attracting thousands of young people and touching their hearts. We can ask ourselves, where did his charisma come from? It came from something he had experienced firsthand, personally, as a boy, when he was only 15 years old. He was thunderstruck by the discovery of the mystery of Christ. He had sensed, not only with his mind, but also with his heart, that Christ is the unifying center of all reality, that he is the answer to all human questions. He is the fulfillment of every desire for happiness, goodness, love, and eternity present in the human heart. The wonder and fascination he felt at this first encounter or contact with Christ never abandoned him. As then Cardinal Ratzinger said at his funeral, and I cite, always Father Giussani kept the gaze of his life and heart fixed on Christ. He understood in this way that Christianity is not an intellectual system, a, a package of dogmas, moralism, but that Christianity is an encounter, a love story. It's an event, and I end the citation. Here lies the root of his charisma. Father Giussani attracted, convinced, and converted hearts because he transmitted to others what he carried inside. After that fundamental experience he had, that passion for man and passion for Christ as man's fulfillment, as the fulfillment of the human person. So many young people followed him because young people have 
um, a, a sense, a sense of what's right, what he, that what he said came from his experience and his heart, and so it inspired confidence, sympathy, and also interest. The president said that you are committed to ensuring that the charism given to Father Giussani for the good of the whole church might always produce new fruit. This is a wise guardianship or custodianship of the gift passed on to you. Safeguarding, not only conserving the past, but enlivened by the Holy Spirit, we know how to recognize and welcome the new shoots of this fruit that is your movement, living in the good soil of ecclesial communion. Regarding this, you might ask, so how can we respond to the changing demands of the present time while safeguarding the charism? First of all, it is important to remember that it is not the charism that needs to change. It must always be welcomed anew and made to bear fruit today. Charisms always grow as 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 the, our truth and understanding of dogma grows in fullness. It's the ways of living the charism that can be an obstacle or even a betrayal to the purpose for which the charism was raised up by the Spirit. Recognizing and correcting misguided ways where necessary is not possible. Unless we have a humble attitude, humility, and that this is done under the wise guidance of the church. And this attitude of humility, I would summarize with two verbs, to remember or to bring back to the heart that encounter with the mystery that has led us so far and to generate, looking forward with confidence, listening to the groanings that the Spirit again expresses today. And the Pope is citing again, the humble man, the humble woman always cherishes the future, not only the past, because he or she knows how to look ahead, how to look at the shoots with a grateful memory. The humble man or woman generates, invites, and pushes us toward what is unknown, whereas the proud repeats, stiffens, closes him or himself in, in this type of repetition. He or she feels secure in what he or she knows, but also fears and always fears the new because it cannot be controlled. He or she feels des destabilized by the new. Why? because he or she has lost their memory. Look at the memory of, or no, safeguard the memory of the founder. Dearly beloved, cherish the precious gift of your charism and the fraternity that guards it because it can still make many lives bloom, blossom, as Hasina and Rose witnessed to us. The potential of your charism is still largely to be discovered. The larger part is still to be discovered. And therefore, I urge you to shy away from, flee from any withdrawal into yourselves, from fear. Fear will never bring you to a good end. Flee from fear and from spiritual fatigue that leads you to spiritual laziness. I encourage you to find the right ways and languages so that the charism that Father Giussani delivered to you, passed on to you, will reach new people and new environments so that it will be still able to peak to today's world, which has changed since the beginning of your movement. There are many men and women who have not yet made that encounter with the Lord that has changed and made your lives beautiful. The second aspect, Father Giussani, the educator, from the earliest years of his priestly ministry, faced with the confusion, the bewilderment, and religious ignorance of many young people, Father Giussani felt the urgency to communicate to them the encounter 
with the person of Jesus that he himself had experienced. Father Luigi had a unique ability to trigger a sincere search for the meaning of life in the hearts of young people and to awaken their desire for truth. As a true apostle, when he saw that this thirst was enkindled in a young person, he was not afraid to present the Christian faith to them, but without ever imposing anything. His approach generated many free personalities, free people who adhered to Christianity with conviction and passion, not out of habit, not out of conformity, but in a personal and creative way. Father Giussani had great sensitivity in respecting everyone's character. He respected their history, their temperament, their gifts. He didn't want people who were all the same, and he didn't want everyone to imitate him. He wanted everyone to be original in the way that Jesus made them, and in fact, those young people, as they grew up, became each according to his or her inclination, significant presences in various fields, whether in journalism and schools and economy, in charitable works and social promotion. This, friends, is a great spiritual legacy that Father Giussani has left you. I urge you to nurture in you his educational passion, his love for young people, his love for the freedom and personal responsibility of each person in the face of his or her own destiny, his respect for the unrepeatable uniqueness of every man and woman. And the third aspect, Father Giussani, a child of the church. Father Giussani was a priest who loved the church so much, even in times of confusion and, tr and strong contestation of institutions. He always steadfastly maintained his fidelity to the church, for which he had a great affection, a love, a type of tenderness, and at the same time a great reverence, because he believed that it is the continuation of Christ in history. He said, and he's quoting now, you have encountered this company. This is the way in which the mystery of Christ knocked at your door, unquote. He used this beautiful expression, the company, the movement, the, the groups of the movement were for him a, quote, company, unquote, of people who had encountered people, uh, who had encountered Christ. And ultimately, the church itself is the, quote, unquote, company of the baptized that holds everything together from which everything draws life and which keeps us on the right path. Father Giussani taught respect and filial love for the church and with great balance he always knew how to hold together charisma and authority which are complementary both of both of these are necessary you often sing in your meetings the song the the way la strada Giussani precisely using the metaphor of the road the way said quote authority ensures the right wo road the right way Without authority, one risks going off the road, going in the wrong direction. And But without the charism, the path risks becoming boring, no longer attractive to the people of that particular historical period. Even among you, some people are charged with a task of authority and governance to serve everyone else and to indicate the right way. This concretely consists in leading and representing the movement, fostering its development, carrying out specific apostolic projects, ensuring fidelity to the charism, and uh, protecting the members or taking care of the members of the movement, promoting their Christian journey and their human and spiritual formation. But alongside the service of authority, it is essential that in all the members of the fraternity that the charism remain alive so that the Christian life, uh, Christian life might always retain the charism of the beginning. Don't ever forget the first Galilee of your call 
the the Galilea, the Galilee of the, f the first time you met Christ that each one of us experienced, that will give us the strength in order to move forward in obedience to the church. This is what makes the road beautiful. And so the ecclesial movements contribute with their charisms to show the attractive and novel character of Christianity. And it is up to the authority of the church to indicate with wisdom and prudence what way the movements should walk on in order to remain faithful to themselves and to the mission God has entrusted to them. And on, in Father Giussani's words, we can say that, quote, it is an inalienable requirement of the incarnation, this continuous exchange between institution and charism. In no way can this relationship between grace and freedom be thought of as a dialectical alternative, as if the institution were not the charism and the charism did not need the institution. A charism a charism needs to be institutionalized and an institution needs to maintain the charismatic dimension. They are ultimately the only reality of the church. Could one possibly think of the human organism without the skeleton that supports it? And so it is unthinkable for the church to live without institution ending the quote. You know well that the discovery of a charism always comes through an encounter with concrete people. These people are witnesses who enable us to approach a greater reality, which is the Christian community, the church. It is in the church that the encounter with Christ remains alive. It is the church where all charisms are conserved, nurtured, and deepened. We think in the Acts of the Apostles of the episode of Philip and the eunuch, an official of the Queen of Ethiopia. Philip was instrumental in her conversion. He was the mediator of the encounter with Christ for that man seeking the truth. Well, how does that episode end? Philip baptizes the eunuch, and the text says, when they came up from the water, the Spirit of the Lord um, took Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more. He saw him no more. After leading him to Christ, Philip disappears from the eunuch's life, but the joy of the encounter with Christ remains. It remains always, and in fact, the narrative adds, and full of joy, he went on his way. We are all called to this, to be mediators for others of that encounter with Christ, and then to let them go on their way without binding them to us. And in conclusion, I would like to ask you for concrete help. I invite you to accompany me in the prophecy for peace. Christ, the Lord of peace. Il mondo sempre più violento e guerriero mi The increasingly violent and warlike world frightens me. This is true. It's really true. This really frightens me. And the prophecy that points to God's presence in the poor, and those who are abandoned and vulnerable, those who are condemned or cast aside in the social, in social life, in the prophecy that proclaims God's presence in every nation and culture going out to meet the aspirations present, aspirations of love and truth, justice and happiness that belong to the human heart and that throb in the lives of so many people. Let this holy, prophetic, and missionary restlessness burn in our hearts. Don't let it just stand still. Beloved, always love the Church. Love and conserve the unity of your company. Do not allow your fraternity to be wounded by division and opposition. This is playing into the hands of the evil one. This is the work that he does uh, to divide. Even difficult times can be moments of grace, and they can be moments of rebirth. Communion and liberation was born precisely in a time of crisis. 
such as those of 1968 and later, Father Giussani was not frightened by the moments of passage and growth of the fraternity, but he faced them with evangelical courage, relying on Christ and in communion with Mother Church. Let us thank the Lord together. Today, let us thank the Lord together for the gift of Father Giussani. We invoke the Holy Spirit and the intercession of the Virgin Mary so that all of you might continue united and joyful on the path he showed you with freedom, creativity, and courage. I bless you from the bottom of my heart, and please, I ask you not to forget to pray for me. Heartfelt words of our Holy Father to those gathered here, members of communion and liberation. What struck you, Maria, as you listened to our Holy Father? Um, those were very beautiful words. Um, at the same time, very realistic, recognizing that there have been some divisions in the movement since the founder has died. Um, but now uh, really um, encouraging us to take up our vocation and to be um, signs of, the, of Christ in the world um, and asking us the special. And we now pray the Noonday Angelus. Oh no, actually the benediction. Benedica vos omnipotenteus, Pater, et filius, et spiritus sanctus. Amen. And now we are asked um, to uh, to help the, the Pope in this work of spreading peace in the world. And it's very moving for all of us. What are some ways you think the movement could participate in this? Um, well, I think that the, the movement can reach out to people of all faiths and um, those of no faith and help um, everyone to um, to pray, first of all, for peace, but also to change the hearts of people by collaborating together in the fields of education um, and in work and helping people to find meaning in their lives. Um, and, you know, people of every faith and of no faith are looking for the same thing. So that is how the movement reaches out to people, such as uh, you mentioned the meeting in Rimini, which is entitled, the subtitle is the uh, meeting for friendship among peoples. Now they're using a South American greeting to <laughs> greet the Holy Father to be ye. Cheer him. The final estimate from the Gendarmeria here in the Vatican is that there are approximately 60,000 people in the square. That is not counting the people who have overflown out onto the streets. Uh, surrounding uh, St. Peter's Square. So over 60,000 people attending this beautiful celebration in honor of Father Luigi Dusani, members also of the dicastery of the laity family and life. Our Holy Father now greeting some of the cardinals and other uh, bishops who are here as he makes his way now. A beautiful words of our Holy Father um, showing his esteem for Father Giussani, who, whose cause for canonization has already been opened. He is a servant of God. Holy Father himself, having read his writings as a young priest and very much encouraging and wanting to help the movement in making the transition from uh, the death of this charismatic figure as they begin to make their way forward without his presence. Oh, God, 
Our Holy Father making his way down the first line of the bishops and dignitaries who have been here coming also from places where the movement as we hear the choir performing a piece of music from the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom and as this is now Linda Gaisani one of the undersecretaries for the dicastery of the laity family and life. Once again, we see the women who gave the testimonies, one placing a baseball hat on his head, the other, it looks like the Holy Father blessing people who might, uh, she might have called. This is David Prosperi again greeting the Holy Father and his wife. He is a married man and father of four children. So perhaps these are the children, I think, that have come today also and one of the priests from the fraternity of San Carlo, um, his brother, Paolo Prosperi, and his mother, Savina. And we pray for especially Davide as he now continues leading this, this movement of laity all over the world. And that is Father Caron, the former president of the fraternity of communion liberation, who is greeting the Holy Father and who received words of thanks also from the Holy Father in, in his discourse. With these images, we now bring to an end this live broadcast from St. Peter's Square, where thousands and thousands, over 60,000 members of communion and liberation from all over the world have gathered with Pope Francis in order to honor Father Luigi Giussani, the founder of the Fraternity Communion and Liberation. We invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal, our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. You'll find coverage of today's event, as well as other Vatican and world news. We will be back again tomorrow live for the Angelus, delivered always at noon that's Rome time we invite you to join us again for that on behalf of Vatican Media I'd like to thank our audio technician Mario Scatone our coordinator Thaddeus Jones also all of our media partners who've made this broadcast possible thanks go to Salt and Light TV Catholic TV Catholic Faith Network EWTN at Madarshan TV and Luminous Radio. I'd also like to thank Maria for joining us today. And you'll also find the text of our Holy Father's Discourse available soon on the Vatican website. We all go away now, missionary disciples, encouraged by the life of Luigi Giussani, and we ask that we too might become people who, through a special encounter with the Lord, are able to attract others to Him and to the Church. Laudetur Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ.
pagina 46.
a journey hundreds of years into history to a time when Christian England